Written by Kelly Corey, Thelma and Louise won Best Original Screenplay at the 64th Academy Awards. It's a stunning work of screenwriting that was voted number 72 on the Writers Guild of America's list of the 101 greatest screenplays. Here are six screenwriting secrets in Thelma and Louise. In the Nutshell Technique by Jill Chamberlain, she says this regarding the break into Act 2. The point of no return brings the protagonist what they wanted and the setup want, but be careful what you wish for. So let's see what they establish as Thelma's want. You said Jimmy was going to get out of town and for once just really let our hair down. Well, darling, look out, because my hair is coming down. In the meantime, you said we was going to have some fun, so let's have some. Simultaneous with getting something they wanted, the protagonist also gets something they didn't want, and that is the catch. It becomes apparent how Thelma gets something she didn't ask for. Oh. Wow. Oh, What's wrong? I'm not gonna hurt you, okay? I just wanna kiss you. Alright? No, no. Come on. Just calm down. We're just having a little fun, that's all. Looks like you got a real fucked up idea of fun. I wanna step back and take another look at the sequence with Harlan right before the break into Act 2. In The Story Solution by Eric Edson, he writes, In Act 1, three things happen. A trap gets set, the hero steps into the trap, then the trap springs shut. Let's take a look at how this occurs in Thelma and Louise. First, the trap gets set. You better dance with me before you leave or I will never forgive you. Sure, that'd be fun. Then the hero steps into the trap. Let's dance. You fucking asshole, or I'm gonna splatter your ugly face all over this nice car. Notice how they open the trap even wider. I should have gone ahead and fucked her. What did you say? Then the trap springs shut. Here's the thing with screenwriting books. Not everything they say will work for your story, and you certainly don't want to follow all of them to the letter. But it's very beneficial to read as many as you can, because they each have a unique gem of information. When the story centers around two main characters, it's important to orchestrate the characters so that their differences create conflict. We immediately see the differences between Thelma and Louise in the way they prepare for the trip. Louise packs meticulously. Thelma packs willy-nilly. Louise leaves her house in tip-top shape. Thelma's house is a war zone. At the Silver Bullet, we see character orchestration when they order drinks. Y'all want a drink? Um, no thanks. I'll have a wild turkey straight up and a coke back, please. Notice their different responses to Harlan. What are a couple of cupid dolls like you doing in a place like this? Well, we left town in our, our own weekend. business. Why don't you try? Trying to have some fun. It's even in the way they dance. Look at how they use the bathroom in different ways. Louise is always checking herself in the mirror. And Thelma, well, she's always rudely interrupted. In the midpoint sequence, Thelma loses a ring. While Louise gains one. When Jimmy asks them a question, notice the different responses from the two women. Who's the cowboy? Oh, this here, uh, this is JD. He's a, a, He's gone. a student. We're just giving him a ride. Thelma puts up with Daryl's shit. He is an asshole. Most of the time I just let it slide. Louise does not. What, you fucking kill somebody? You start this shit, I'm out of here. We also see character orchestration when it comes to secondary characters, specifically Harlan and JD. Harlan slaps Thelma to hurt her. JD playfully slaps her in a game. Harlan doesn't stop when Thelma asks him to. JD does. So remember to orchestrate your characters to create a nice contrast in how they interact with each other. During the course of the story, it becomes evident that Louise is haunted by a past trauma. I haven't seen a place like this since I left Texas. Now how come you never told me what happened to you there? It also doesn't matter if the audience knows exactly what happened. 
All we need to see is that it negatively affects her decision making. Thelma, you know how I feel about Texas? We're not going that way. The only thing between Oklahoma and Mexico is Texas. Look. I know what's making you run. I know what happened to you in Texas. In Texas. I mean, that's what, that's what happened, isn't it? You was raped. It's quite possible that without this ghost, the woman would have gone straight through Texas and escaped safely into Mexico. But then we wouldn't have much of a story, would we? At the age of 37, While breaking down the scenes for Thelma and Louise, I noticed that the two women go through significantly different emotional journeys. We all know the classic hero's journey from all the screenwriting books, but there's another archetypal journey that's a yang to the yin, the virgin's journey. In the book The Virgin's Promise by author Kim Hudson, she states this, In Jungian terms, the virgin must overcome her father, or Ophelia complex, which is a need to please and conform to others' values. The virgin is so busy meeting the needs of others that there is little time or room to discover her own needs. This is exactly what I noticed in Thelma's character. Now, I still have to ask Daryl about ghosts. Thelma, what kind of state? Is he your husband or your father? I've not told you I can't stand it when you holler in the morning. I'm sorry, doll. You want anything special for dinner tonight? No, Thelma, I don't give a shit what we have for dinner. I've never been out of town beside Daryl. All he wants you to do is hang around the house the whole time while he's out doing God only knows what. The book also says this, the opportunity to shine is the action that leads to the first expression of the virgin's potential. The virgin reveals her talent, her dream, or her true nature. We see this when Thelma unexpectedly robs a grocery store. It was like I've been doing it all my life. I mean, nobody would believe it. Think you found your calling? Maybe. Thelma shines again as she puts a New Mexico State Trooper in the trunk. Air, air holes. I just feel like I got a knack for this shit. I believe you did. I guess I went a little crazy, huh? No, you've always been crazy. Is this just the first chance you've ever had to really express yourself? Stage seven of the Virgin's journey is described as caught shining, when the Virgin is exposed and revealed to the world. This happens when Daryl and the police see Thelma in the surveillance video. Later in the story, we get this stage. The Virgin decides to trust herself and pursue her dream or passion, whatever happens. She would rather shine than be safe or maintain order. Something's like crossed over in me. I can't go back. I feel awake. Good. Wide awake. I don't remember ever feeling this awake. Now let's take a look at the flip side for Louise's character. The Virgin is about self-fulfillment, while the hero is about self-sacrifice. So let's see the ways that Louise sacrifices herself. She's the one that takes out her life savings so they can flee. She's the one that shoots and kills Harlan, sacrificing the free life that she can no longer enjoy. She releases the man that loves her in order to protect him. If you want to understand more of the Virgin archetype, I highly recommend checking out The Virgin's Promise. It's an eye-opening book that's also recommended by Christopher Vogler. Objects are a fantastic way to make characters pop off the page. Characters have their own objects that help show us who they are. For example, Louise has her cigarettes. What are you doing? Smoking. Hey, I'm Louise. <laughs> <laughs> and Thelma has her liquor. I'll have a wild turkey straight up and a coke back, please. Hey, uh, I'll some bottles of wild turkey too, will you? Yes, ma'am. We also see this with secondary characters. Notice Daryl's license plate. Isn't this completely in line with his character? and we have Jimmy and his steel top guitar. The New Mexico State Trooper isn't complete without his objects. Put on his hat. Oh my God, he's a Nazi. And finally, we have the fuel truck driver. Look at how his items tell us everything we need to know. Using wardrobe is another excellent way to externally visualize the progression of the story. Look at how Louise is dressed in the beginning. 
Later, she starts to shed her feminine side. And look at Thelma in the beginning. Notice how they're dressed at the end of the story. Over the course of the film, we also see the women take objects from others. This shows us the change that occurs in their character. Oh, cool. How are they? Where'd you get this? Stolen. So she let the phone keep ringing. Could I trade glasses with you, Maggie? Thanks. Okay. <laughs> It's an overlooked aspect of screenwriting, but objects and wardrobe can go a long way in bringing life to your characters. We all know how pressure is created on the characters when they start running out of time. Just like time clocks, there's another way to raise the stakes, by eliminating the characters' options. Thelma and Louise is an excellent example of this. Let's take a look at how their options keep diminishing as the story progresses. There's no physical evidence. Can't prove he did it. We can't even probably prove by now that he touched her. Up until now, we had only two things going for us. One, nobody knew where we were, and two, nobody knew where we were going. Now one of the things we had going for us is gone! Don't blow it. You got it. Give it to me. In a way, you got something to go back for. Jim is not Jim is not an option. As the two women are pursued by the police, even their spatial options are decreased. Better get off just in case. And of course, there's the good old-fashioned way of raising the stakes. Put a threat on the characters' lives. I think I got us in a situation where we both could get killed. We're going to have to charge you with murder. Now, do you want to come out of this alive? You know what happens? By him gets turned way up, and the next thing you know, these girls are going to get shot. Place your hands in plain view. So don't forget to raise the stakes as the story progresses. Make both time and options run out on the characters. So what other films would you like to see me cover for screenwriting? Let me know in the comments below. A sincere thank you to my wonderful patrons for supporting me on Patreon. Also, be sure to subscribe and tap the bell to be notified of upcoming videos. More great content is on the way. Thank you so much for watching.